Speaker. Uh, what does homelessness actually entail? In the words of Rachel Moran in her excellent book, Paid For, the word homeless seems to present the condition as a single lack but homelessness is actually many individual deficiencies combined. The worst of them are emotional. But to mention the physical challenges first, the single worst bodily aspect of homelessness is exhaustion. It is caused by several different factors, including sleep deprivation, hunger, and a constant need to remain on the move. Madam Deputy Speaker, this explanation of homelessness is insightful because it shows us just how inadequate the word homeless is. To live without a fridge, cooker, TV, shower, sofa or bed. That is a struggle that homeless people contend with on a daily basis. It may start as sleeping on a friend's sofa, then another friend's. Then a week-long stay becomes a day here and a day there, until there is a night when there is no sofa available, and instead a doorway is used, probably nearby, and then you drift. And one day you have to acknowledge that you are homeless. It did not start this way. We all see homeless people. We never expect that we will become one. And how damaging to your self-esteem and mental health is that moment when homelessness becomes an acknowledged reality? How does anyone find their way back? In Scotland, the number of homeless applications is decreasing from a peak of over 60,000 in 2005-06 to 34,600 in 2015-16. 294 of these applicants were made in my constituency of Inverclyde, and that's 294 too many. We've made progress. But Shelter Scotland have indicated that there has been no underlying change in the drivers of homelessness. Almost half of those that made homeless applications in Scotland are single males, and for the 16% are single females with a child. Shamefully, many of those people are ex-service personnel, people who made the highest commitment to serve their country and have not received the support that they deserved. Although homelessness is primarily tackled by the UK and devolved governments, local authorities also play an important role. Scottish local authorities have been hindered by the policies born in this place, such as the right to buy, as it was not reinforced by a need to build. According to Scottish government statistics, we have lost over 450,000 homes from the social rented sector as a result of the right to buy. Thousands of the homes that remain are of a dubious quality, and it is estimated that about one in ten households in Scotland are affected by dampness or condensation. Thankfully, the Scottish Government has ended the right to buy, and more than 16,000 new homes were built in the last year, a rate which is higher than the UK average. I hope to see this issue prioritised as a matter of public policy across the UK, particularly as homelessness is increasing, increasingly being stigmatised. Recently, the Huffington Post reported that crisis spoke to 458 people who were sleeping rough or had slept rough in the last year and said they were facing ever more hostile streets. Councils, developers, businesses and other organisations are deploying defensive architecture, iron and concrete studs placed in flat areas to prevent homeless people from finding a place to sleep. It makes you wonder what the threat is and why do we need to defend ourselves from it. A compassionate society should not be deploying medieval-style defences against vulnerable people who need assistance. So-called defensive architecture is dehumanising and sends a clear message, go away, disappear, you are not wanted. Homelessness is an issue of priorities. Instead of encouraging developers to build luxury apartments, some of which are bought up as investments and never lived in, we should be building social housing. Our welfare system must also be tailored in a compassionate way that enables people to have a platform on which they can build their own lives. Our current system does not provide that support. A universal basic income could be a solution to address social ills and protect the most vulnerable from becoming homeless. At the very least, we should be exploring that possibility instead of tinkering around the edges of a system that is in need of a more fundamental reform. I will concede that homelessness is a complex issue, one that cannot be eliminated just by burying it with money and legislation. Homelessness is not an initial housing, it is also a product of inequality, poverty, domestic abuse, family breakdown and addiction. It can happen to anyone from any background. In closing, Madam Deputy Speaker, we should never allow ourselves to accept homelessness as an inevitable result of a modern society. It is not inevitable and it does not need to happen. Complacency on the part of the UK Government will result in a failure to tackle this issue. Rising living costs, stagnating wages and the UK's mismanaged welfare system is putting increased pressure on homelessness services. My fear is that progress being made at Holyrood is undermined by the welfare decisions taken at Westminster. Ultimately, people sleeping rough tonight do not care for the local authorities, devolved administrations or the UK Government have the power to help them. They just need support. It is up to the elected members across the UK to ensure that they receive that support.